This is how to set up a portable storage. First thing we're going to do is go to reserve, to reserve. Click on that, then we're going to hit add. Then you're going to need to determine which size unit you're going to do. You have these portable storage containers lifting here. These are the actual containers. When we do a delivery, we're going to set it up as a temporary, and then we'll change it to the actual number later. So click on the temporary size. Okay, we're going to do multiple units. So we're going to go to five. So we're going to do Joe Schmo. Okay, say we're delivering it to the office. We need a primary phone number. and then a primary email address, the main email address. If you want to put another phone number in there, it's just fine. Some people will not give you their social security for portable. Actually, the majority have a problem with that. So I've been asking them to give the driver's license and the state instead if they will not give that to you. That is okay if you want to do that. Tax ID, just put a period. We use that for a password hint. And then their birth date, if they don't want to give you their birthday, most of the time they don't have a problem, just put in all zeros, which would be six zeros. Okay, it brings up this box. This is something that do with other people in other states. It does not apply to us, so just go ahead and skip this and just hit OK. Even though it has the zip code in it, it's just fine. Okay, now we've come to the storage, to the payment section. On the gate, you're going to need to come over here. Oh, never mind, it won't let you do it. I forgot. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out the market information. You can go ahead and fill in whatever it is. Now, on a credit card, if the customer doesn't have a credit card and they, uh, our system requires a credit card because we, that's how they have to pay on portable. If for some reason they don't have a credit card and they want to pay in cash, that's fine. To bypass this, you put in 42, 42, 42 up until the numbers of a full credit card like as a Visa or a MasterCard. It doesn't matter what expiration date you put in. And then in the name, I would just put a period. This is also something you can do. So if they're going to call you back with a credit card, you can put this in just to get you by and then they can give you uh, the information later. That way it takes away and it'll allow you to save this order. Now we're going to go in and we're going to say this is an order. We're going to go into dispatch. There's add before, add after. Add before is the first thing you're always going to do. On an order for portable, you're always going to set up the delivery date and you're going to set up the pickup date. Whether the pickup is returning full or, return or coming back empty. Those are the only two things you need to set up. So we're going into add before. We're going to go over here and make sure that from the location is going to be our billing address. It's from our warehouse, so we click on warehouse. To the customer's address, you would click on billing address. It just happens to be the same because that's what we put in. You're going to want to go over here, and you're going to want to make sure that the phone number is correct. If there's any other person, say, that's going to be there other than the customer, this is where you would put that information. Then over here, there's a section that says directions, instructions, comments. We do not use instruction or comments, so do not use those. You put all messages to the driver in directions. So you would type in here, call Joe when in route. And say it's a different phone number, so we put in the different phone number here, and then the driver will have that information when he needs it. Then we're going to go over, we're going to set up a delivery date. Say we're going to deliver this on the 20th. 
And if you want to set up a delivery spread, normally we do a two hour window. If we do that, let's say from 8 to 10, this does print out this information on the driver's paperwork, so he does look for this information. Now we're going to go over here under services, and we're going to say what type of services. This is a warehouse to curb empty. That's all you do. Fill out that information. Don't worry about all this other information. This right here is driveway type. You could put something in if you want to, but we generally don't do that. I just put all notes in the driver's directions. Okay, now the first thing you're going to do now is after you've set up your delivery empty, you're going to come down here and you're going to find out, you're going to make sure you put in the correct delivery charges. For this location, you have four containers, so the delivery is a total of $50. But if you don't change the $50, it's going to charge $50 per unit. So we're going to change this to $12.50, so it will be a total of $50 for the four containers. Now we're going to go up and we're going to add after. What this add after is, is we're going to pick up, we're going to set up the pickup date. So we're going to come over here and we're going to say the containers are returning full to the warehouse. We're going to go ahead and set up a pickup date. Well, let's do it the next day. Normally on a pickup, we do not schedule a time. We just say that it'll be that day. If for some reason there's a reason you need to set a time, Go ahead and do that, but then you're going to need to make sure you tell the driver in advance. Okay, we've gone ahead and set up our delivery empty, and we've also set up our return full. We're going to close here. So right here it shows us that we have a unit of $40. I know that there's four units that we've set up to the customer, which will show right here, but it only shows you one for this. It will show the total amount down here for four units that's hundred and sixty dollars and then the transportation is fifty now you're gonna ask the customer if they're gonna wanna rent blankets if they wanna rent blankets they can do that here we do not provide insurance so ignore that if they wanted to purchase padlocks you can go in here into the padlock section and we're gonna say that they want four of these you click on four you click on the thing you're gonna change the quantity to four you're going to tab over, you'll see that it changes the total. If for some reason they have a coupon and you want to give them a discount on this, over here you're going to, you're going to give them a fixed discount. So we're going to give this all free to them. So it'll be $25.48 and you need to click right here and then you'll see over here that it's a zero balance and then that way the customer is not charged for the logs. So now we have still the breakdown of the containers. $160 with the delivery charge, so the total is going to be $210. We're going to go ahead and save this. Normally right here is when I will print the contract, even before I get a charge. Right here you can either print the contract or you're going to email it. We're going to go ahead and print this contract. Go up to print, we're going to click on PDF 995, hit OK. This is going to tr turn it into a PDF file. We do this because this allows us to be able to, uh, we already have a, docu a PDF open, so we're going to need to close that. We need to resave it. This allows us to be able to do a double-sided contract when we print it out for the customer so that there's not 20 pages of contract. Once you got it up, you're going to hit print. You're going to come over here to properties. You're going to come to layout and you're going to change it to two-sided. You're going to go back to basic, you're going to hit OK, then you're going to come over here and you're going to say we want three copies. Now you're going to want to listen to make sure that the copier is printing. We can hear the copier is printing, so we can go ahead and close this. If for some reason the customer wanted you to email them a copy of it, you could go ahead and click on that and email them a copy of the contract right here. At this point in time, we're done. Okay. What this, we just hit saved, we finished. What this did is it saved it as an order, okay? The order is not complete yet. Now that we're done with that, we're going to go in over to dispatch, and we're going to find that order. It is right here. Now you're going to see that there's multiple Joe Schmoes here because there's four containers. The first four are for the delivery, the second four are for the pickup. We're just going to worry about the delivery right now. 
So once the delivery, you've got to click on one of them, then you go up here to lease. Now it's brought us back in to where you do, do the charge and stuff. We're not going to change anything. All we're doing is going back over to the dispatch. We're going to double click on the delivery, empty, and we're going to change this status right here to, call, to complete. Once you hit complete and you save this there, and go out of this, there is no way to ever go back into this. So you have to be very careful. So we're going to hit close. We're going to save that change. Now that you've saved this, you will not be able to go back into this order. It is completely say, completely processed. So once you save this, though, it will allow you to print the contract if you didn't print it the first time. So you can go in and print it. Again, I want to remind you, when you're in that first section, you need to save everything. If you put all that information in and you don't hit save, then you'll lose everything and you're going to have to redo this. As you notice, now that we've hit save it, it's allowed you to come in and you can do a payment. This is where you would click on payment and you would go ahead and it'll put the amount that's due and then you can go ahead and put in the credit card. If there's a card on file, you do the card and then you'd hit OK. This is a dummy card, so I'm not going to try to run it. Once you go ahead and do OK, it'll run the process of a normal credit card and then it'll kick you back out. And now it's now you're completely out. It rolled, kicked me out of it completely because um, I'd already saved it. So that's why it's important that you print the contract first um, before you take a payment so that you have a copy of the contract.